well. <laughs> Guys, welcome to Dublin, or welcome back, should I say. Sean, you were here for, obviously, the Walworth farce, yeah. and I've just got the inside scoop, Simon, that you did six months here in Trinity. That's true. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I did. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, Trinity College. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah, it's a great spot. Yeah. So congratulations on Mindhorn. I thought it was absolutely wonderful and farcical and hilarious. Um, can you tell me where it came from and how you got involved in the, the story? Um, yeah, so I had the initial sort of idea. I was listening to a, a song, uh, a CD that actually Julian had given to me, and I heard the word, the name Mindhorn. Um, and just, I wrote it down and I thought that sounds like a, um, a detective, <laughs> I mean, you know, it was one of those detective shows like Bergerac and um, I chatted to Julian about doing, Julian has a similar love of that sort of genre of, you know, Bergerac and, uh, you know, Wycliffe and, and the shoestring and all those, so, and we just went, how can we do that sort of um, uh, genre, you know, and have fun with it? but not just make a parody. And then we had this idea of Richard Thorncroft as an actor who used to be in a mm -hmm. TV show. And from there, it, it, it sort of snowballed into the film you see. And then Sean yep. came on board to help us along with it. Yeah, and it's um, uh, your first feature film. Yes. How, yeah. how was it for you to step from well, it was stage easy, to screen? Wasn't it? So <laughs> one, once, easy, he, once, it's, it's he, um, easy, once he knew know, which I mean, way around to point the camera. I don't know what camera. people are making such a fuss about. <laughs> I mean, I kept shouting at the actors, speak up, they can't hear you at the back. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, we had lots of problems with Sean and he didn't like to use microphones. And he said, so what is this, what is this thing, this box here? It's yeah. a camera. No, uh, you, you learned pretty quick, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, it, in a way, it's... Uh, I, I always say, because people say, well, I mean, it's completely different. Of course it's completely different. Yep. But there's so many things that are exactly the same. In that you know, you, you, you know, your job is to get the best out of everyone, and to, in particular, in in uh, you know, comedy, to uh, one make sure that the script is funny, which was easy because two people writing it were um, very adept at that and knew what what they were doing. But you know, th there's there's that, and then choosing the actors, and then knowing how to. Uh, it's the same thing in the theatre as it is in. Um, making the film you just you have to keep going until it is funny mm. you know <laughs> and, and don't and don't uh, don't just assume that it, that it is you yeah. know and make sure you've got uh, in this case the shot or you know in in the theater make sure you've rehearsed it right so mm. you can perform it right and so it, you, it'll get the laugh you know it's getting the audience's focus in the right place Great. so the technical things are all different but you know in the end, you can't make a com a, any sort of comedy unless you've got a good script and great actors. So, Very true, very true. You mentioned uh, Bergerac as an inspiration or a jumping off point. Um, I felt it was the film was sort of very partridge -y and very... Obviously, there were hints of the Mighty Boosh in there and Garth Marenghi's Dark Place and stuff like that. Did you take inspiration from these places or did you just go, right, OK, this is who Mindhorn uh, is and go from there? Yes, people have said that. We didn't... Yeah, we didn't think about... Um Partridge or any of those other, or, or Mar Garth Marenghi, we know those guys, and we thought it was very different sort of characters. Yeah, we didn't really think of that. I think I think the comparisons are with those, like any sort of British comedy character. The, there's a lot of similarities. Same with sort of John Cleese, and there's a there's a status anxiety with them. I suppose is is the thing the thing that runs through them. And mm -hmm. but we didn't actually even think of that. We just thought, what if an actor who Actually, often we thought the premise, and we thought the police are looking for um, the actor who used to play this character. Mm -hmm. And our jumping point, actually, for the character was what is the best person to meet comedically at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, so and because he's washed off, you know, that that for us was the was the funniest sort of. You know, and he's lost his hair and he's got a big paunch now, and and so that was our kind of jumping off point for the character, and and. Uh, if it's similar to s some of the greats, then <laughs> so fine. So be it. <laughs> but, uh, but no, we didn't have. We didn't really have any. Any. We just wrote what what we both found sort of quite funny about that that sort of character. Yeah. That's great. And uh, I mean, a lot of that. A lot of the things you mentioned, although of course um, there's a terrific, uh, you know, Alpha Papa film. Yeah. With Steve Coogan. Uh, they're, they're, they are genuinely more TV phenomenons, mm -hmm. whereas uh, certainly the thing that when 
the guys first sent me the script, the thing that I really liked about it in terms of being, a, you know, a British, original British comedy was the fact that it had this fantastic story and it had characters that sustained you through the story and it was a, it was a proper kind of film story in a sense, no matter how farcical or daft or surreal in a way it gets, you mm -hmm. are really watching a character, you know, a man goes back to kind of try and relive glories um, but uh, you know what? What is waiting there for him is just a descent into sort of farcical hell. You know, so we put him, we put that awful character, sort of a very arrogant um, person, through the mill. Mm -hmm. You know, for our amusement, and that's what was uh, that's what really appealed to me. I thought it was a, a great story, a sort of of uh, if you like comic redem redemption. Yep of seeing this character realise that he's an arsehole. <laughs> you know, and that's basically the story of the film, mm -hmm. is, that is an arsehole realises he's an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> that should be on yeah. the poster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And your cast is amazing, your Dutch accent is fantastic. How did you go about assembling everybody into the film? Well, it was a little bit through, um, you know, Simon and Julian have uh, worked with Steve Coogan before, who then, you know, kindly agreed and wanted to play this other brilliant uh, character, sort of nemesis, really, of, mm -hmm. um, of uh, Julian's character. Uh, so he came on board, and then, uh, you know, the script was good, so we, yeah. could, we could ask really good people. I've, I'm always of the opinion that, you know, that famous old showbiz saying, you know, w let's ask, if we see if we can get Frank Sinatra. You know, when Frank Sinatra was the number one, mm -hmm. you have to go, let's go for the number one, because they can, uh, they can only say no, and then you go, right, so... Um, you know, so I knew Kenneth Branagh, I worked with him before, so let's get right. him in to do that cameo. Yeah. And, you know, so we, um, uh, and then uh, people I mean, like Andrea uh, Riseborough literally yeah. read the script and said, can I be in it? You know, so and, we Andrea were lucky as well. Andrea was a fan of the Boosh. She, she was liked a fan the of the Boosh, Boosh. wanted yeah. to, a woman of wanted taste. to work with us. Yeah, <laughs> even though it was very sort of different. I think she sort of thought she was going on a magical, surreal adventure and ended up <laughs> playing a quite, quite, a quite realistic film. <laughs> well, no, she wasn't. Well, Essie yeah, Davis, absolutely Essie fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Australian actress, in a, you know, who had seen in much more dramatic mm -hmm. roles. But because we wanted to play the comedy straight, that, that fitted right in. So, uh, you know, that, that was... Uh, I, think it, I think if you've got strong work and you, people can see that the people who are behind it are, you know, authentic in some sort of way, you know, know, know mm -hmm. their onions, basically, mm -hmm. then uh, you'll get good people on board. Great. And finally, what's next for you guys? You're writing Paddington 2, I believe. Yes, Paddington 2 is, is, is written and um, with Paul King and it's being edited uh, as we speak. No pressure, so, though. <laughs> no, I mean, there is. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> there's, um, yeah, but that's very exciting. It's going to be going to be great, I think. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a busy, going to be a busy year this year. Great. And Sean, you, what do you have plans? I'm going to open a show, a um, theatre show, a version of Molière's classic comedy, The Miser, in uh, London's West End, very soon, next week, actually. Wow. And then hopefully do, uh, I'll be doing a, a film, another film, in uh, L.A. You've got the bug. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have. Well, uh, congratulations again on Mind Horn, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so do you plan... <laughs> well, well uh, I, would there, have, I would have liked to, actually, but I don't think we're going to have time. Meeting up with your serial killer. <laughs>